Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I will be showing you how to set up a decal and use it in your space. I have done a video on this previously but I wanted to show a bit of an updated one basically walking through this process. You can see here that I'm actually in the Quixel project called Unfinished Building. It's a project you can get uh, on the actual fab marketplace and all and it's uh, pretty awesome just because it's a a couple of showcase rooms and all for some concrete and sort of an unfinished building as the name implies uh, but they really use decals as an awesome source of additional details and refining at the end uh, i can toggle them on and off here and you can see how it kind of takes some of these simple walls like this one over here and really adds a bit more touch and kind of uniqueness to it uh, same with these as well, just kind of flipping between the two. Uh, you can see that they have some pretty nice actual tiling textures and all underneath, but everything is kind of uniform and not necessarily uh, connected to how the windows and walls are attached. So this really helps give some of that kind of corner uh, grunge as well as the roof and even the window grunge there. Uh, and I can kind of toggle, uh, toggle on the, uh, the actual visual for it too and you can see how they're placing them. Um, they're pretty powerful because they can be overlapped as well. But yeah, let's get started with actually creating our own. So I'm gonna go down here to our content browser and I'm gonna right click and just create a new material. I'm just gonna name it decal or so. And this is just gonna be a very simple one. So just wanna show the actual process first of setting one up. We're gonna double click on this and let's get a color in here. So I am going to just ever so simply uh, set up this plugin for the base color and let's change it to, let's say blue. There we go. And I'm gonna hit apply. And I'm gonna go ahead and also just add a metallic and a roughness uh, just for, yeah, visual sake. But there we go, there we go. Roughness there, metallic there. And these are just, uh, yeah, simple uh, one constants. And then this is the uh, three constants. So I was using my keyboard for the shortcuts for those. Uh, but going to set a value of zero for the metallic and then a one for the roughness. That way we just have, yeah, something very simple. And one other thing that I wanna do before we can actually use this as a decal, of course, is actually change the uh, material type. So right now you can see the material is set to material domain. Uh, make sure that you're not selected on one of these. You can also select this if need be, but the material domain uh, needs to be changed to deferred decal. Uh, and so we can, yeah, now switch that over. We're good to go. And then you'll notice down here that we most likely have an error. Uh, this one says material using the deferred decal domain can only use the blend mode translucent, uh, alpha composite, or modulate. So I'm just going to switch this one over to translucent and no more warnings and we should be good to uh, yeah, kind of go with that. So uh, there we go and I'm going to go ahead and exit out. So simply put, the nice thing about Unreal is that you can now take the uh, decal that we just made and just drag it into our scene. And now you can see that it's actually applying all of the blue to majority of the scene, no matter where I'm kind of placing it. And that's because if I uh, turn on the visuals for debug, uh, it's basically a bounding box. So it has a bounding box that we have, we can edit, we can adjust and all of that. So I can yeah, shrink it down. If I pull it down lower, you can see that it, uh, yeah, it's basically not affecting that top portion because of the bounds of the, the actual decal. Um, but it is affecting everything in this area. One thing to note with this is that you can actually go in to certain individual meshes like this one here, and I can search in the decal or in the details for decal. And there should be a receives decal uh, for this mesh. I can turn this off and that means that that mesh won't receive the decal. So that's pretty nice if you do want something to not be affected by it, uh, but you need the bounding box to be much larger. Uh, you know, the other argument is of course, just not having the actual decal kind of um, 
going wherever that model is but sometimes you can't really control it especially on something like this ground uh, maybe you know some of these things might need to actually be like turned on or turned off for the the referred decal so uh, there we go and now i'm going to jump back over should see there we go Sometimes, yeah, you'll notice here that it was a bit under the ground, so I kind of lost the uh, little like paper icon to uh, click on it. So should always be there if you're in the viewport. Uh, it's pretty easy relatively to find them. Sometimes, yeah, they crash in. Of course, you can find them in the outliner as well, but yeah. So now we have this, and what can we do next? So this is just, of course, just kind of doing a blanket sort of blue across everything and that's because it's filling in the entire bounds but we can also use masks for this so what i'm going to do is actually go and find in their project uh, a material that i think i could use so i'm going to go over here and let me find mega scans decals and i think i'm going to use decal leak dirt 01 and since we're already digging into someone else's files, I think this is a good time to also mention how important it is to keep safe and up to date with your own personal security. For me, I feel like it is every week where I hear from a friend or relative that has been impacted by their personal information being stolen. Generally, data brokers will sell that information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, relatives all end up on the internet. And that's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. When someone does get impacted by their information being stolen, it's recommended to use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, thankfully, Aura does all this for me. And best of all, I don't have to download several different apps to manage all of these different aspects. It only takes one. If my info is compromised at any point, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy and I also value yours. You can go to aura.com forward slash Peyton Barnet, which is also linked below in the description to start your two week free trial and see how Aura could start saving you today. And now back to finding our textures. So in here, you can see that there's a base color or diffuse. That's why there's the D there. Um, and then this is an actual texture pack uh, texture. So I'm just going to bring in this. Might not use it yet just because of the blue being a little bit easier to actually visually see. Then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the texture pack uh, texture as well. If you need to see what is in the individual like texture packs, uh, you can double click this if need be, and you can toggle on and off the RGB channels. So I can toggle off uh, those, see that red doesn't have anything, green has kind of a, a flat uh, look. Then B is the one that actually has the opacity and basically the mask that we would want for this. So I'm gonna be running with using the B for this. So uh, yeah can exit out of that now and pull from the B, plug it into the opacity and at the uh, yeah very simplest form, we can now exit out of here and we are now getting those masks uh, in here as well. So uh, I can kind of adjust it a little bit if need be just to align a little bit better with the, the shape. Uh, technically you can also go in here and either set the scale um, there or uh, down here to the decal size. If you look at these textures, you will notice they are a 512 by 1024. That's why the square that kind of was the default uh, isn't exactly perfect. Um, but sometimes, especially with decals, since they're not like conformed to anything, a lot of these might just be adjusted however uh, you might want. But uh, yeah, I can now take this over and uh, rotate it and then place it on the wall and we're starting to get some cool like blue staining so that's pretty cool like I said if I want this piece to not have that decal I could go in here and type in decal and turn that off if need be but it will probably affect my other one so I'm just going to most likely there we go need to find it um, gonna go back there we go 
So yeah, I'm gonna most likely, you know, edit the actual like depth of the decal itself. Might push in the, uh, yeah, there we go. So it's a little bit less on there now, um, working out and we're starting to get some cool decals. So uh, pretty easy and simple. They also do overlap so you can go and just duplicate them out, um, really add a lot of variation to your scene and um, be able to control it pretty quickly. So uh, with that as well, if I go back to my actual material, um, so I'm gonna double click on my decal, I could turn this to be a bit more rough, so it should be a little bit shinier, um, or I guess less rough, so setting it down to a point to value at the moment and uh, might get a little bit more spec response out of it. We could also check the uh, actual view modes and see how it's basically looking. So let me see here. So yeah, now uh, it's also showing up, which is really nice. And being able to just add in stuff like, you know, certain staining or whatever you might need for your scene is pretty powerful. Um, these also technically work with a couple of your other material features as well. Uh, mixtures of stuff like normal maps, uh, as well as like your metallic and everything else um, to really be able to like yeah, push your scene a bit further. So what I wanted to do real quick uh, as well is kind of show, i um, gonna plug this guy in. And a lot of times what you'll find is, especially with the ones that Megascans or the, yeah, the Quixel uh, project will have, is they do like setting it up with like material instances. Uh, this is really nice because you can very simply, of course, build out like a main material and then have instances where you just swap out the texture as well as control values like the color and all. Uh, so if you wanted to, let's say, take a existing one and then kind of make it a bit brighter or so, uh, similar to like how you can see down here, some of these are actually like almost white decals, uh, which are pretty cool. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't always have to be just a, a dark kind of grunge. Uh, it can really be even, you know, similar to what I have here with my blue. Uh, it could be any sort of color, but similar to some of the other videos that I've done, you can just convert it to a parameter and you could just name it a, uh, yeah, your texture, uh, or I guess it would technically be my diffuse map. So there we go and just hit apply. And then you would easily be able to uh, also do that for the same thing down here. So this could be my uh, packed maps. If I go back to the one that is in scene, we can see now that, uh, yeah, basically it is using that base color as well. Um, so you can get a bit more refinement out of it. This is the one that we've made now that I plugged in that uh, base color and I can, let's say, rotate it over here and yeah, really easily be able to add uh, grunge to a lot of these spots and all. So um, really nice in that front and then, you know, if I jump over here too, I can now uh, right click and create a material instance. We have our decal and right here, if we go to the global texture parameter values, because I didn't like set a group or anything, I can drop down from this and we can find my diffuse map and my pack map. So I can very easily go and actually set up a bunch of different uh, actual instances of this material and be able to, yeah, really quickly do that workflow. So gonna go real quick, grab one more decal here. Let's go de uh, decal leak dirt two. And yeah, like I said, can throw this in here as long as it has the same location and then same with that as well. And now I have this one, which is one of my decals. But additionally, if I were to jump back over here, I could also bring in this one, um, which is using the same exact like setup and all. And so inside of Unreal, of course, very similar to materials, you can really quickly set up a, a bunch of like instances 
of your decals and be able to walk through the level. Um, being able to actually just place out a bunch of decals without having to worry about your UVs or anything, as well as your mesh itself, like if it's sitting up off the ground and all, um, you're able to really overlap a ton of things very quickly and get a lot of detail in there, which is pretty awesome. So, um, you know, you can definitely take them a lot further, uh, continue to add and if you go into the decal selection too, uh, as you can see down here, there are certain sort orders. If you have sorting issues with it, uh, you can set the number um, for each individual decal. The fade for the decal as well, so you can set your different fades for uh, each individual instance of a decal or so. Um, but as you can see, yeah, I think they're super powerful. I'll select these again just to show the difference between them on and off. I think I left one or two out, but overall being able to uh, go from this to this without having to do any sort of UVing or anything else, I think is super powerful for your environments and really that quick process near the end of an environment. Um, one other thing that I want to mention too is if you are like running around with your character, so I was just going to play here with the character real quick. If you are running around with the character as well, very similar to how we set up the uh, actual setting on the individual meshes uh, to receive decals or not. Uh, if you turn that off on the character, uh, then it should not have the character basically showing that. Um, one way, of course, is having it closer to the, the wall or so, but uh, if you needed to additionally still not have it show up on the character, you can uh, disable that uh, pretty much on any mesh. But uh, yeah, uh, decals, you know, could be used for stuff like graffiti, or grunge, dirt, uh, even dents or cracks. Honestly, anything that you feel is a little bit more of a unique uh, kind of piece of a material that you can figure out. I think, uh, yeah, it's really powerful for that. So I don't think there's like too many limitations if we're talking about like what we're wanting to project onto something. Uh, of course, like it, you know, within reason of what a decal is and could be used for. Uh, but I think overall, there's a lot of possibilities with them. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see in a future video. I also have a Patreon now if you would like to support the YouTube. Um, basically just going to still continue to make these sort of videos and expand upon them further. But Patreon's just a, a way if you do want to support the uh, channel, it'd be awesome. But um, yeah, besides that, that's about it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.